One thing to note about all these different fairness metrics is that there's no one fits all metric. So first of all, it will depend on the problem type that you're solving. And then secondly, it will depend on the underlying data and also the fairness criteria that you want to implement. So we're going to have a look at the fairness criteria in just a moment. It is, however, important to decide to use a fairness measure. So even just starting out with a simple approach, like taking the metric that you already plan to use, but then computing it for the different groups or subpopulations that you have present in your data set can be a big step in the right direction. So what do you do if you actually find that the performance is different? Well, you should take a step back and start debugging the model, maybe collect additional data, use a different algorithm, or maybe modify the training of the algorithm to enforce certain fairness criteria and constraints more directly. And more generally, actually using these metrics and computing it per group can be very helpful in spotting issues and preventing misconceptions. Now that we've seen examples of fairness-specific evaluation measures, we can talk about the trade-offs in responsible AI and machine learning metrics again. We already know that we have a primary objective of making the model as high performant as possible, but now we have the secondary objective as well of adding fairness constraints, potentially enforcing the explainability of the model, or maybe we need to use privacy-preserving data. So these things, they can all be at odds with one another. It could be that increasing transparency reduces the amount of privacy that we can assure. And similarly, if we make something too coarse, well, then the model performance itself may suffer. 